Okay, I thought I'd make um, another video on how to do make a water type mesh or um, in ZBrush, and that's to use DynaMesh. But it doesn't really work with hard surface stuff. You'll see what I mean, um, which is why I recommend using Blender's Remesh instead of DynaMesh in in ZBrush. So if we go, let's just hit DynaMesh. Oops. <laughs> so sort of similar results to what we were getting in Blender. You can see it just flattens across the, the front and flattens in there. Um, I mean it's only two places but and also if you go beyond, beyond 2000 it starts to freak out. Um, I mean maybe it's a sort of scale thing or something but um, so yeah, it just doesn't work. Um, and now while I'm here, I might as well quickly show you how how you can cut. I mean, ZBrush is really useful for cutting really dense mesh. So once you create the really dense mesh, this is 2.8 gigabytes. Um, you can um, uh, it, it ZBrush is useful for cutting the objects up using the live boolean. So I'll just demonstrate that um, because yeah, I don't know. I don't think you'd be able to do this in, in Blender I mean because the object's so massive um, but ZBrush is pretty good at handling really massive objects so if you do any like photogrammetry or anything where you just end up with a huge file and you need to cut it up it's um, ZBrush is really good like that um, okay is it loaded loaded okay it should load any second now great so that's that loaded so what I tend to do hold down shift just to get it sort of flat on turn the perspective off sub tool append oops append uh, cube select the cube scale the cube down and position it where you want it so let's say we just want to take the front off here, uh, something like that, and then set the ship to like the main object, and then enable live boolean, um, and um, and then you've got these different intersection mode, or this is just subtractive, and this is intersection, and then when you're happy with it. Just hit bo boolean and it will create another sub tool. So let's just do that. Make boolean and obviously it's quite a dense mesh. So let's take a few moments for it to do it. If we've got time, come on. I might stop the video here. It'll probably take about a minute or so for it to do it. And then you can select the new sub tool that's been created and append. Um, and well, what I do is so create the boolean uh, in an intersection boolean, and then create a subtraction boolean, and then you will have two new parts. So select one of the parts and then append it with the other. Then you have both parts, and then you can export them out together. I might, I might as well show you. Um, off it goes. So this is so in here, you'll a new sub tool will appear. Come on. Uh, it's going to do it. I so wish the pause thing worked in, um, you know, so in uh, OBS. But anyway, okay, so that's that created. Escape. I think I'm just going to stop it here because it's going to take forever otherwise to do the other chunk. Uh, but you see, there's a new there's a new piece that's created in there. Um, so then what I would do, before selecting that new piece, I'd go in this one and do the invert and then hit make make a boolean mesh and then this piece will be created. And then in here switch to that and then append it with the other, with the, the, the back half. Um, and and then use the Z plugin export 3D print hub STL and that will then export both parts. Um, I'm going to stop the video because it was really just to talk about the DynaMesh and why it doesn't really work very well on 
on hard surface um, stuff to make watertight mesh. Okay, that's it.